We have the results tonight of an ABC News investigation into one of the fastest growing businesses in the U.S., recycling trash. Millions of Americans have made recycling a part of their daily routine. The people who pick up the recycled material and take it away from your home are in a business worth millions and millions of dollars. And as ABC's Morton Dean reports, that's the kind of money that has always attracted organized crime. And what are the kinds of things that we can recycle? Does anybody know? Cans. From nursery school on, we are taught that recycling is good. Good for the environment. Good for America. It is also good for organized crime, especially in the Northeast, where the mob has added recycling to its traditional base of hauling garbage. Well, the industry itself is influenced, controlled, and dominated by the mob. Uh, so anybody within the industry is dealing with the mob in one way or another. An extensive review by ABC News of court documents, corporate records, and police testimony, and interviews with law enforcement officials show that alleged associates of the Gambino, Lucchese, and Genovese crime families are profiting from recycling in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut. Companies allegedly tied to the crime families pick up recyclables from millions of homes and businesses. They run sorting operations. Investigators say the mob controls brokers who arrange shipping and sales, and it controls union locals and trade associations, which determine who can do business and how. They kick back money to the mob, they subcontract to the mob, and the mob decides who gets big within that industry. Oyster Bay, New York, has an aggressive community recycling campaign. Some of the town's old newspapers go to P&P Paper, run by Joseph Patrizzo. I've been listening to uh, connected with organized crime all kinds of time. But where? Associate, but where? Who what? Where the help for me? I don't see none of them in here to help me clean this paper up. In a federal lawsuit charging racketeering in the garbage industry, Patrizzo is identified as a member or associate of the Gambino crime family. In New York City's recycling program, a company called Omni Recycling has a contract to handle bottles and cans. According to investigators, Omni is linked to both the Gambino and Lucchese crime families. And the Genovese crime family allegedly has connections in New Jersey and Pennsylvania through Carmine Franco. American and Northeastern are two of his companies. Recently, the state of New Jersey fined Franco and his brother Salvatore nearly $4 million, in part for allegedly dumping recyclable trash. The Franco say they're not guilty. Investigators say many mob-tied recycling companies often do not recycle, but just dump the trash instead. That way they can save money by not having to look for customers to process the recyclables. They save all those costs of cleaning up the material. They save the time, the prospect time of going out and securing markets for the sale of the material. There are all sorts of money-making scams in the recycling racket. Businesses are charged for extra dumpsters in which to separate recyclables. But the recycling companies often mix it all together again. Or some businesses pay extra to have the recyclers separate the trash, which they don't do. Frequently, they send mixed loads illegally to the Midwest or the South, where they are dumped at low cost with few questions asked. These recent photos obtained by ABC News from an undercover investigator show a mixed load which was heading from New Jersey to a dump in Indiana. As recycling becomes mandatory in more and more communities, there will be even more and more opportunities for the mob to make money. Look, the mob can see the future as well as anybody else. If the future is mandatory recycling, they're going to be there. Law enforcement officials are just beginning to confront mob influence in recycling. They know it will be a challenge, just the way it's been in the garbage industry, where organized crime has prospered for 50 years. Orton Dean, ABC News. New York. Garbage is big business. Here in New York and in a lot of places around the country, the private carting industry has been controlled by the mob for decades. Today, prosecutors in New York began a cleanup, arresting alleged mobsters on charges that they used violence and economic pressure to kill the competition. Anthony Mason reports on the mob, the trash, and the government's big haul. It's a dirty business. For 40 years in New York, if you wanted your garbage picked up, you had to pay the mob's price. But today, police collected the garbage collectors. 
the leadership of the organized crime controlled cartel that has long dominated the private carding industry in New York has been indicted and arrested. 17 arrests in all, 23 carting companies had their assets seized. Garbage, police say, is the mob's most lucrative, legitimate business. A billion and a half dollars a year. 500 million of that is the mob's markup. When Houston-based trash hauler Browning Ferris began to crack the market two years ago, they were sent a message. One of our uh, executives um, found a, uh, the head of a dog underneath his mailbox one, one, uh, one Friday. There was a note attached. A note attached to his mouth that said, Welcome to New York. The client lists of these mob-connected companies reads like the Fortune 500 and even includes, CBS News has learned, the FBI and the U.S. Post Office. Browning Ferris has had trouble winning contracts, even offering some businesses half the mob's price. It wasn't worth the risk, the perceived risk, that something might happen to them should they switch their carter. Customers basically told you they were afraid to, to do business with you. Some of them have, yeah, absolutely. One big bank feared its teller machines would be jammed. The reputed godfathers of garbage, Genovese family boss Vincent the Chin Giganti and Gambino boss John Gotti, in jail but still in control. He's sitting in a uh, heavy security prison. He can get messages out, but they're very limited. So, um, yes, he has some influence, but it keeps dwindling. It may dwindle further after today's arrests, which officials hope will create a mess the mob can't clean up. Anthony Mason, CBS News, New York.